and welcome to a special edition of the State of the Fleet Industry video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. And this video series is designed to put a spotlight on key leaders in the uh, fleet management industry. And today I have the honor to talk with Tom Callahan, CEO of Donlin, and we're going to be discussing his company's recent acquisition by Athene Holdings. So I'd like to thank you for joining us, Tom. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate the time, as always. Yeah, likewise. So, um, so once again, congratulations uh, on uh, the acquisition by Athene Holdings. It seems like it's a great matchup. Um, and I'm wondering if you might be able to explain to the viewers, um, you know, what is Athene Holdings' main business and why did it want to buy Donlin? Athene Holdings is an insurance company. It's got over $200 billion in assets. It focuses on annuities. And it really was interested in Donlin because... Uh, its clients are looking for moderate returns for relatively stable risk profiles. And I think that fits fleet management very well and fits Donlin. Mm -hmm. And they've been watching Donlin for a while. They've been looking at our progress. I used to routinely get probably three or four questions every year, whether or not Donlin was for sale when it was under the Hertz ownership. And finally, when we became available for sale, we had a number of suitors. And they were the ones that uh, came forth with the final stalking horse bid and ultimately uh, won the prize. Uh, they want to utilize Donlin as a growth platform. They have several growth platforms. Uh, one of them, for example, Midcap Financial is a consumer finance platform that they've grown from 1 billion to 9 billion. If you look at uh, our evaluation close to $1 billion, they want to significantly grow the platform. And they have capabilities in a number of areas beyond just fleet management, but they really want to focus on us, focus on growing our people, our talent, the capabilities. We just recently concluded a very successful billion dollar capital raise. Uh, it was significantly oversubscribed and we were very pleased with the amount of investors that again, love the Donlin story, frankly, love the fleet management story and invested uh, with a, a number of new players and some existing players as well and some great names. So I think that speaks well to our industry, how well it's received. Uh, the relatively conservative nature, I think of our portfolios. I mean, we've got a lot of wonderful companies uh, that underpin all of our lease securitization platforms and, and that continues. Uh, also Athene, uh, there's going to be some great opportunities for cross-sell with the other Apollo companies. Apollo recently acquired all of Athene. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're really doing that because they're focusing very much on more of a conservative insurance portfolio. They look at us sort of like uh, Berkshire Hathaway investment. Uh, when you hear private equity, I know people sometimes run for the hills, but at the end of the day, this is more like a uh, forever platform, meaning that they don't want to ever sell this, this platform. Uh, they want to just keep this uh, in their portfolio for a long time uh, and not, not sell it and flip it, you know, three, four years, like you probably heard with other PE firms, mm -hmm. uh, which I think plays very well with our customers and prospects because that's the nature of this industry. Uh, as you have said before, uh, we're, uh, we're not early adopters necessarily, but we do take a lot of ideas from a lot of other industries and incorporate that within fleet management. I'm excited, frankly, because we are a standalone fleet management company now. My focus can be 100% on driving fleet management. Uh, as you know, under the Hertz uh, regime, we were a division among others, Rent-A-Car. At one point, they uh, were uh, Herc was underneath them, but now we're a standalone uh, fleet management company. So it's exciting. Our people are exciting. It's good for the investment. I think it's good, quite frankly, for the uh, for the uh, industry in, in general. Mm -hmm. And Herc being the Hertz. Uh... Rental equipment business. Work rental equipment. Yeah. Yes. And they spun off and they've been very successful mm -hmm. standalone company as well. Yeah. So let's let's build upon the recent acquisition by uh, Apollo Athene Holdings. It was already a minority owner of uh, Athene Holdings. And the acquisition happened just last March, if I'm not mistaken. It was in yeah. the neighborhood of $11 billion. So uh, not insignificant. So it was a substantial yeah. investment there. But to build on what you're talking about earlier, does ownership now by the larger Apollo Group uh, provide uh, Donlin with business opportunities in other areas? And how do you envision that occurring? 
Well, I think one of the things that'll provide us is some great cross-selling opportunities with other Apollo companies. And also I think it speaks to the fact that Apollo is shifting uh, to a, a more uh, conservative insurance-based uh, portfolio. Uh, and that helps us as well. I also think that the ability of us to tap into other companies uh, that can help our customers like folks in the equipment finance area, consumer finance. So in addition to fleet management services, we can provide other services for our clients, which is great because as you know, uh, the more offer opportunities, the more products and services you can offer, the more stickiness that you provide and uh, they stay with you. And uh, Apollo uh, has a, a strong interest in, again, building our platform into something much bigger than it is today. And mm -hmm. it's a pretty good size right now. Very good. Yeah, you know, another uh, interesting and uh, exciting development in terms of Donlin is uh, you have now new board members, some yes. of them, you know, industry veterans. Uh, I was yes. wondering if you yes. could identify some of them and uh, how you're going to be working together. Yes, it's a small board. We probably have four or five members right now, a couple folks from Apollo, but we have one member that uh, I think the folks in the industry know pretty well. Christy Webb is going to be on our board, and she, of course, was uh, the CEO president of uh, Element, and I'm thrilled to have her on the board. Uh, I think she has seen some things that we have yet to see because she obviously managed a bigger uh, platform than we did. Uh, she has a reputation in the industry of being extremely customer focused, which I think is very critical for us. And I think she's a great thought leader. And so we've already had numerous discussions already and she aligns very well with what we're trying to do. Uh, the Apollo folks reached out to me and asked me specifically what I thought of her joining uh, the board because they gave me, uh, I guess, veto power, so to speak. And uh, I said, this is somebody you, you absolutely want to get uh, on the board. I think it'll help our growth, help our customer focus, and her knowledge of the industry and what Element went through, I think is going to be very important. And she's mm -hmm. just a great person. What are your customers saying about all this? And, and one of the things that I like about uh, interviewing uh, CEOs of fleet management companies is you're a great source because you've got your ear to the ground. You're here from a lot of different companies, a lot of different industries. And what are they telling, what are they saying in regards to the acquisition? And then also what are they saying that they're seeing as their key trends in their business and challenges and opportunities? Well, the one thing that they're saying, we just, uh, it's a very timely question. We had our client advisory board, uh, uh, not as long a one and a, a virtual one as we're all living through right now. And uh, we had the folks from Apollo and myself talking to them about the acquisition and their thoughts about it. And there was keen interest and they're excited about the opportunity. I think number one, they wanted to make sure that there was a stable home for us. So when the discussion was around that they want to have the Donlin platform as like a Berkshire Hathaway kind of platform and a platform that you basically, it's a forever platform, that's important uh, to, to the customers, mm -hmm. as well as I think that they're very happy with the uh, discussion around further investment. I think that they want to know that you're going to be growing with them, that you're going to be growing in people, your scalability, uh, technology. That's all important to them because once they sign up, they, they want to sign up for a long time and they want to make sure that you can grow with them. Uh, the industry itself, that some of the feedback that I've been getting, you know, there have been some industries like construction, others who were doing well before the pandemic, still doing uh, better. Others like insurance are rethinking their business models. Uh, others are asking us about various things about work from home and, and certain trends. Uh, generally speaking, uh, everybody is coming out of this, but I would say that my initial reaction from the customers are better than I think they initially thought, but I still think they're trying to figure out what's the new normal going to be in their companies. Uh, there's still a number of clients that are not replacing vehicles right now. They're extending some of the terms. And I think part of that, Mike, as you've talked about in your segments as well, is the unsure nature of when they're going to get the replacement vehicle. So they're a little nervous about doing away with the devil they know versus the devil that they don't. 
So we have to help them with supply chain. I think that's a key focus that everybody's been really focusing on, not just with the OEMs, but how we're tracking it and how transparent uh, that we have to get to. And really being able to track from the time it leaves the plant all the way to the ultimate uh, customer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an opportunity for the industry as well. So that's some of the things that our customers are, uh, are talking about, concerned about, uh, challenging us on, uh, as well as, again, you know, the continuing to look forward. There is some discussion, again, about electrification. Pilots, I would say, are starting, not wholesale changes, but certain industries certainly are challenging us to uh, get with them on certain uh, parts. Um, mobility, the urban uh, mobility opportunities. Uh, customers that have dense urban populations are looking at alternatives to company cars and looking at whether or not the company car profile meets all of their employees. We've been challenged by some of our customers to look at that too. So that's another area that I think is going to be growing and our customers are, are asking about. Uh, the, the other thing I think around the fleet manager position in general, the trend continues about outsourcing. And, you know, it's they want to be more strategic. We hear from a lot of our fleet managers that they want to be strategic, but they can't get out of the weeds and they've got a lot of things that they have to do on a tactical basis. I think this is good for fleet management companies to help partner, but they're getting some pressure from their folks on top to be thinking broadly. And mm -hmm. so then they come back to us and they say, how can we partner so I can get out of the weeds? And I think that's an opportunity for us. Very good. Yeah. And then, um, Sounds like a good way to conclude our conversation because we've reached our allotted time now, Tom. Like to it goes very fast. <laughs> it goes fast. You know, we could double this and there could be a part two to this interview. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mike.